a point to a point to brought up to the execution folks is that um, well I, I can do a bit of a reminder of what, what's going on um, just to check if my is my mic quality good yes it's great yep you sound awesome. fine cool so yeah one one of the points of the contract that I I, I emphasize is that without interaction from DevOps or someone from our team, as long as there are funds in the contract, the queue should clear in the event of insolvency. And the way it's going to work is if the contract cannot execute the transfers, then the transfers will be queued in the contract state. And then whenever the transfers can succeed, they will be automatically cleared in, in that same system transaction. So the the most notable difference added since we last talked about it last week is there is a new parameter that is supplied by the system transaction where it specifies how many of the pending withdrawals will be executed in that same transaction. And I would appreciate some help from uh, Nethermind, if possible, to do benchmarks to pick a value that feels safe in that regard. Uh, but aside from that, that that's about it. Yeah, Marek? Uh, should we do it on uh, one of the devnet, or uh, how do you see that the benchmarks? So I think the limiting factor would be just to see what, what is the added load in processing the block, if it has that, that many that many failed transactions to process, and then just pick a value that, that we are comfortable with. Okay, got it. So I don't, I don't think, I don't think it should matter the size of the network because at the end it's just EVM execution. So just t tell me if I'm wrong, but the, the but, cost should uh, be the same. If you are accessing the state, it might have, you know, on the DevNet you, we can cache entire state to the memory, right? So not oh, sure. I see. So it might uh, have a big difference in mainnet. Yeah, that's a good point. Why not a default to 16? So we there are, there are two parameters. The first one is the the, trans, the withdrawals that will come from the block, which you have to either process and forget about it or, pro, or process, attempt, fail, and store. And on top of that, you may have to clear the like previous fail withdrawals, which is exactly what, what I'm bringing up now. Like how many fail withdrawals should be cleared per block. Yeah, I mean, that. Like, let's default it to 16 as well, like we have a 16, 16. Oh, I see. Of course, we will do a benchmark, yeah, but we can have some initial default value. So it will be like double of the initial one. We have a 16 in the block, and we may have a, like up to 16 fail withdrawals, so it will be 32 with the worst case. Right. So the, the point with that is it will take, so if, if we do the same as the, as the block value, then if we have one day worth of fail withdrawals, it will take that same amount of time to clear up. So again, I don't, I don't have strong opinions either way on, on what's what's good to do here, but it's something to keep in mind. Say that we, if, if we have fail withdrawals, we want to clear the queue twice as fast as, as, it, as it feels, then we may want to have a higher value. Oh, I see. But yeah, it all means, this should be a rare scenario. Um, like for the contract to be insolvent in the, in the current situation, there would have to be a significant exit of funds from the network. Um, otherwise, Ponzi nomics will apply and existing capital can pay for rewards. Uh, Lukas? Is there an estimate of gas, um, gas used on, on those numbers? So how much how much, how much more gas much. used would be used if we have this um, queue filling up and let's say 16 and let's say 64, right? That we clean up it four times faster. How how much gas that transaction would use? Yeah, I don't have the numbers, but we 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 should compute those numbers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and generally, it's a good question about all withdrawals. Uh, how much gas will be used uh, by this withdrawals transaction. Of course, if they will be normal transaction, if we map them to the normal transaction, uh, how much gas 
uh, we yes. will need to execute this contract. Uh, and then, then we can decide based on gas, right? Because we have 15 million target, right? So how much gas do we, we want to potentially withdraw, withdraw stake? So, so we need to be aware that uh, after withdrawals, we are always adding uh, something to the block, some amount of gas used to ignore this block. Yeah, we'll check with eHeart to have some benchmarks. Um, yeah, just co computer has of some test transactions. Awesome. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for the withdrawal contracts. Um, so, what what about DevNets? I think last week we talked about um, starting some, maybe with a mock contract for withdrawals, but now that we have the right one, uh, can we spin up new ones? I mean, a DevNet with the actual contract, or are there any blockers or something? Well, we can do a round. So starting for Nethermind and Erigon, what, what's the status of implementation? Yeah, so we, yeah, Ruben can comment on this later, but we started a DevNet, internal uh, DevNet, uh, using a mock contract uh, just to test our implementation. So the DevNet is up. Uh, so we, it was it was brought up like a few days ago, so we're still testing it and seeing that everything works correctly. Yes, for Cattle, so far, everything goes positively well in the middle of processing, uh, progressing with tests. So, uh, so far, it's good. Yeah, and this is obviously a mock contract, not the existing one. Awesome. Uh, what about Aragon? Uh, it uh, it's not implemented yet, but um, uh, I can do it uh, this week. The implementation. Great, and um, should we spin up a DevNet that is well that for both clients at the same time, so we can test interrupt as well. Or is it too soon? Well, I, I think we can do it on Monday, maybe. Yeah, it should be should be feasible, I guess. In the DevNet that you guys have done internally, it's starting from Bellatrix merged, or what? What what uh, is starting the from? I think it's Bellatrix on Epoch uh, Zero and all the, yeah, Bellatrix and the uh, Epochs that come before Bellatrix are all in Epoch Zero. Then you have um, Bellatrix uh, merge at, uh, I don't know, you merge and then you, and then you enable withdrawal. So it's not like starting merged, starting proof of stake. It starts with Aura, it produces a few Aura blocks and then it merges like, uh, a few hundred blocks from the fish. Should we keep testing that mode or just TDD at zero? Um, I don't know. To be honest, the, the thing is that the problem the thing is that the playbooks that we have and the scripts that we have are from the, the time of the merge. So the genesis that we generate for the CL is apparently incompatible if you want to start with a TDD zero, right? So we, it happened to us that we tried to do it this way. But when we generated the genesis, the, SS, the SSC genesis uh, using TTD zero, it was incompatible with uh, Lighthouse at least. So uh, and apparently, so we didn't dig dig uh, a lot into that issue. But apparently, the, the problem is that when you want to start like a post merge testnet from genesis, the the genesis changes, so, so the the one that we're generating is not valid. But it, yeah, then let's keep TTD at some value. It doesn't, whatever is easier. Yeah. Great. Um, 
Well, let's move to client updates then. On the execution layer, uh, never mind. Yeah, as we'll tell, we are running a devnet for withdrawals. And uh, besides that, I guess uh, we still delivered this uh, tracing fix for pre harvested blocks, right? Uh, that's not relevant for Gnosis. Uh, okay. Probably besides that, no update. Okay, uh, Aragon? Uh, we've managed to get Shadow working. So there was uh, some uh, some issue with um, Nethermind um, disconnecting useless peers, but uh, we we created um, snapshots of uh, Shadow blocks. So I think that, that that issue was happening only at block zero, but now because we have um, snapshots, that shouldn't be an issue. And I also I believe Nethermind um, are working on a fix as well. Yeah, I'll also add that the light clients now works for Gnosis and Kyoto um, on Aragon, so that's great news. Yeah, but I think the problem is that um, it, it, it's only supported by Nimbus. So there was this, we kind of think it's not, that the, there are not enough light client peers uh, so that it's stable. We enabled it by default in our latest release, but I think that was a mistake. So we actually, we now, it, it, it is, uh, Possible, but we think it's it should be only experimental, not not enabled by default, because of the low low um, low number of, of light client peers. We need to get right. uh, yeah. But we either need to get light client support on Gnosis uh, on other CL clients besides Nimbus, or <laughs> increase the population of Nimbus nodes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Maybe making that by default was a bit uh, too soon. The only two Nimbus nodes are run by me actually right now, so that's a bit, it's not enough. Uh, I think Lodestar is compatible as well, as far as I know. But um, I'm working with DevOps to get new nodes out there um, to support Aragon. And also uh, Aragon nodes for snapshot things, well, for torrent things. So hopefully that, yeah. should, that should work soon. Cool. The DevOps should, should run a bunch of Nimbus nodes uh, permanently for that purpose. Yeah, yeah I, I'm working with them. It's a bit complicated right now, but we're getting there. Awesome. Um, okay, uh, Get. I'm not sure if Guillaume is there. I, I, I can't relay the, the update from him. He will. He cannot attend. Um, from Guillaume, he's trying to run latest Prism on mainnet uh, to see if that works. Then, if that's successful, we can cut a release and start promoting it. And he will be working on get seeing for the rest of the month. Um, actually, sorry, I, I now realized that um, I, I remember something because um, in Basel uh, there is this uh, carnival, Fasnacht, uh, happening uh, for three days, Monday to Wednesday, and it, it's impossible to work because it's uh, it's nonstop music and uh, and. Uh, Entertainment and it's it's a yeah it's a big event here. So I am afraid I won't be able to to, to do any work until Thursday. I mean I I can try do uh, implementing uh, withdrawal analysis this week, but I, unfortunately I won't be able to participate in any testing on Monday or Wednesday only on Thursday ne next week. So maybe we can tr do this test network on on Thursday the what what what's the the second of March. Okay, I'll pencil that date in, and then we can talk about it. I guess that's uh, the next core dev call. Um, oh yeah, also regarding Prism, actually, I, I had a question for Guillaume, but. Uh, well, he's not there. Uh, Lion, do you know the best way to contact him on Telegram, maybe? Yeah, Telegram is best. OK, perfect. All right, well, on the consensus layer side, I guess there's not much new. Um, well, I'm publishing, I, we're publishing Nimbus images on the Gnosis chain repo now. 
which are updated um, well as soon as upstream gets a release. So that's uh, yeah what we're going to use for our nodes, our Nimbus nodes. I'll just quickly past, paste the URL here. Okay, so uh, for the channel infra gateway, do you have any news? Uh, yeah, so uh, we already have like half of the traffic from public RPC on Chiada uh, redirected from uh, public Gnosis RPC to our RPC. And for mainnet, uh, we also have some redirect, but uh, a bit uh, less for now, it's 25%. Uh, sounds good, and uh, we plan also to increase uh, the mainnet traffic. Uh, so the redirect of this mainnet traffic to 50% and more. And uh, our team also started to work on bridge validator, but uh, like right now is more reading the scripts and documentation and playing with this. If we will be lucky, we can do some, like we can start asking questions and uh, asking for help, if any, before East Denver. But it's also possible that during East Denver, um, there will be some pulse on, on this because a lot of team members going there. So we started with Bridge Validator, but um, just to be transparent, uh, the work can be slow during the East Denver conference. That's it. OK, thank you. Um, regarding Beacon Chain, um, I, yeah, maybe Dan, you want to comment? Uh, yeah, so I think just for this, I think we clarified in the group as well. They said they will only be ready to launch the, sorry, the Beacon Chain Explorer, which is critical for the withdrawals, um, having a UI available for people to switch from 0x0 addresses to 0x01 addresses. Um, they will only have the UI one month after the Ethereum Shanghai Capella merge, um, which then leads, I think, to the next question, which is when is a realistic time for withdrawals? Um, because I think there have been quite a lot of inquiries from the community. Um, and I think we sh shouldn't overpromise, uh, you know, just give something that is realistic. Very likely the withdrawals timeline will be based on when we are technically able to deliver a good enough experience for you know, everybody involved and have the supporting infrastructure in place. Yeah, Mara, go ahead. Yeah, I want to bring up uh, one thing that is not in agenda. Uh, do you know uh, if anyone is working on Hive test or PostDAO test? Because it could be something that we are uh, still missing. No, as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think so. Um, I think that this would be something great to source someone to take ownership, but um, I'm not sure if we have that capability. Um, do you have any more data, Philip? No, uh, as I was going to say, I am i don't think there's any work on this. But yeah, I know we've talked about it in the past few weeks. Uh, who would be able to do something like that? Is anyone from Nethermind that would have capacity to do either of the two? Oh, uh, I, to be honest, hives are uh, written in Go, so not sure. And uh, okay, in long term, it will be better. Uh, maybe maybe we can do something. For example, uh, Jorge uh, took care of uh, merge testing, right? He wrote all post-DAO tests for merge, but long term would be great if we have like, I don't know, some clear ownership of this uh, test, so I'm not sure what do you think, uh, especially if we want to mm, write some custom features for Gnosis like withdrawals or uh, shutter is eight beacon chain and so on. Yeah, so as you say, Hive is written in, in Go, but now is essentially a uh, truffle test suite against the contracts. Um, 
I would feel inclined that Hive should be the, the best long-term path. And like if, if the contracts are stable, you, you could do whatever you want from Hive. Say that if we stabilize on a contract, we can compile the bytecode and the transactions and then just run that from Hive. Um, do you think that would be better than having to deal with the post out test suite? Yeah, probably hives will be better uh, long term, as you said, because Ethereum uh, also support hive tests. But uh, initial cost might be uh, bigger for hive because we uh, don't have any like uh, Gnosis specific tests for hives. Is, is there anyone or any team in Ethermind that has somewhat decent Go level, say, besides mm. Jorge? Pro uh, for sure, we have Go developers, but I can't like uh, confirm that uh, their av availability. So uh, we will ask uh, in the team. Yeah, because I think so. The testing is critically on their own, so um, would would be great to have someone. Um, I guess if if it's a resource problem and you have the people, I'm sure like Gnosis could support that. Um, so yeah, something to consider. And especially yeah, well, it's as as you being the main consumer, I think it would be like a good synergy. Yeah, we will discuss it internally, so we will see. I'm not sure if we can like quickly um, um, get someone to work on it. And I guess, so for our case, we, we wouldn't need uh, a suite as extensive as Ethereum if we can cover the base cases that, that would be um, good, good enough. Because if, if I recall, the the hive testing suite for withdrawals is relatively succinct compared to the the one for mainnet. Ma mainnet say everything else bad withdrawals. Mm, yeah, the only changes will be required in chain spec, and. Uh, this contract related things. So, for example, you can't just read get balance. For example, uh, Hive tests uh, are sending get balance request to verify if we apply correctly withdrawals, and it won't be the case for uh, Gnosis withdrawals. Right. Yeah, we'll have to write a bit more of custom transaction code. Yes, yes. Yeah, initial initial um, work will be much bigger, but long term hive tests uh, will be probably better than support post data tests. And I guess, given that the APIs of the contract are spec and should not move, then like th this test should be fine long term. Yes, I think so. And yeah, like I'm not sure about you guys, but the post out test suite is really annoying to work with. Like I, I know I know you guys have already figured out that like Jorge is our yeah. expert, so he can comment on that. Just just as a silly question, what are the parts of post out test suite that still need to run? Sorry, could you repeat? Um, what are the parts of the post out test suite that are still needed to run? It's mostly around the XDAI uh, block rewards, right? Yeah. So the main suite, it, it tests the functionality pre-merge. I think that's that, that's where it has the most value. So it tastes things like initialize the validator set, <clears throat> make sure that rewards are applied correctly. Um, I think it also rotates the validator set, uh, does like voting and other other um, post out specific mechanisms. Uh, but given that all of this is deprecated, that it's not that critical anymore. Yeah, 
yeah, that's how that's mainly mainly that, and then you test uh, that you're able to go through the merge uh, correctly and uh, without uh, having forks or nodes getting stuck, and then you yeah, and then it's mainly block rewards, right? so block rewards and transaction priority, which is a feature that it's not been like much used uh, right now in Gnosis, but it's still there, like transaction priority contract. So those are the two main things that are being tested post merge. I see. So as long as they're still syncing for Genesis, we will need to maintain this test suite. Sorry? As, as, as long as people are syncing from Genesis, they will still need to maintain the full test suite for this. Yes, yes, yes. So, so this is, they have been very helpful in the past. Like uh, sometimes uh, we, we catch uh, places that we would have broken, uh, for example, uh, pre-merge stuff, like Aura stuff that would have prevented people from, from syncing correctly. Um, yeah, yeah, they have been helpful. So yeah, in that regard, without tests are still relevant. Is there maybe someone from um, Aragon that can help with type tests or, it's, well, it's written in Go? Uh, well, I can ask, but I don't think we have um, free developers at the moment. Okay, thanks. Um, I think that's it, or yeah, maybe let's talk a bit about the realistic, um, time frame for the merge. Uh, yeah. Do you have any ideas on this? For Shanghai. For, yeah, for Shanghai and Capella. Great is done. So, so yeah, I meant hard work in that merge, yeah. <laughs> If, if, if we work backwards from this, <clears throat> so we have mainnet fork before we should do Chiado, and then before we should do at least a decent set of um, definites and shallow forks that prove functionality. So yeah, I guess I, I can I can build a GAN diagram with you if you want to do some estimations, but. Yeah, I think we, we, we discussed timelines in, in the past, um, and uh, this is more of a PM question if we want to impose some timeline on ourselves or just um, try to go to the next step in a timely manner. So now it would be more, uh, let's let's optimize definites and make them as useful and productive as possible. So um, could you comment, Jorge, exactly on how this definite that you run went and what modes did you test specifically? Yeah, so I can comment on the setup of the, of the DevNet uh, and the actual testing grouping is uh, actually working on that currently. So DevNet is uh, pretty simple, fairly simple to, to spin up. Uh, so it's something that's uh, very much automated for us right now. Uh, we have like, uh, I don't know how many, I think very uh, a few dozens of validators on the Genesis file, like it, from Genesis, no deposit nor anything. Uh, so yeah, everything went well. So we went through the through Shanghai without the issues, and so so we we so when I last checked, we haven't still tested uh, the actual withdrawing. So I don't know if Ruben has made any progress on this. Yeah, I'm learning how to activate these uh, BLS addresses to be able to do withdrawals now. So this, this, uh, this, uh, the IPs for these nodes that are running are public. Uh, so we could, uh, for instance, for example, share uh, some kind of RPC or even I, I think even this the, the SSH keys in the machines are the same that we use for the merge. So you, Lion and, and, and Igor and all of you should have access to these machines. Also, if you want to to help you out with testing here, so that's that's something. 
So could Aragon join the same DevNet then? Or yeah. should we spin up? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Aragon could join this testnet. So the, the only uh, characteristic uh, to be aware of about this nest, this test is that we are using a mock contract. So basically, something that uh, when you withdraw, what you do is just change something in the contract storage so that we can verify that the statement is correct. So we can do some calls to verify that we made the proper change. But that's it. Cool. So I guess that the next step, um, and we can do that without Erigon, is to deploy a DevNet with the actual smart contract and then make sure that the flow is complete. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we can, we can do that. Uh, so we can do that with, with a pre-funding the contract to simulate that it has um, value. And yeah, make sure that all, all the flows are, are fine. Then would be cool to test the insolvency case. And I think that's that's good for say until Erigon is online. I think that's good. Yeah. And that's that's something that we can do fairly quickly and easily if you provide us with the bytecode for the constructor, for example, the contact like uh, the compiled bytecode. Um yeah, and we can do that's not like uh, Maybe this week uh, we can have it up and share some good notes so that everyone can join whatever it is able to join. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Well, I guess that's it then for now. Uh, unless someone has comments or questions. Yeah, we can. So we can think about the details. So for for mainnet, um, another step that we will have to do that will not have any minute is we will need to upgrade the deposit contract. So that's something that we have to test. Um, probably we may want to do that also on a on a DevNet. So we should start with the bytecode of the main deposit contract and then do the, up do the upgrade on chain before Shanghai, then Shanghai and make sure all is good. Um, we probably want to do the same in Chiado. Uh, I will have to look now what contract specifically is deployed in Chiado because Chiado was not started with deposit from Genesis. Um, everything was pre-funded. Um, so we 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 may want to recreate a somewhat mainnet-ish um, scenario for Chiado and then try to do the fork as close to mainnet as possible. And the, the other point, um, I, I don't see these noted here, but I guess when we are closer to Chiado, we should start to test the tooling. Um, so we know that a significant portion of the Gnosis community comes from Dapnode and other like less technical backgrounds. So we must make sure that those users can um, change their withdrawal credentials and do withdrawals in a way that's easy and comfortable to, to their setup. I think this point is also kind of lacking in mainnet too. So yeah, just something to keep in mind that has to be developed. OK. Well, then there's a bunch of things to do then. So for the new DevNet, um, with actual contracts, so should we then start with the bytecode of the current contract in this case, and then uh, upgrade it afterwards? I would do the, the upgradability. We can do it later. Like, it, it, in all practice, this is just to be extra, extra, extra safe, but it should not have any impact. Like in our case, we can just start from the final bytecode and it should be fine. OK.
Okay, any other comments? Well, I guess we're done then. <laughs> Thanks for joining and see you next week. Felipe, uh, just one, one comment. I'm not sure if this was brought up about the archive nodes uh, running Nethermind um, with the issues oh, right. we've had. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just archive nodes, but there seems to be a few issues with 1.17. I, well, yeah, I didn't have enough time to actually check what issues they were. Uh, I know from a fairly competent source, I guess, that uh, attestations went well a bit down with 1.17. Um, yeah, I don't know if Nethermind has some information regarding that particular issue. Oh, first time I heard about it. So if you uh, have any more information, I don't know, uh, you can uh, send on Telegram. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so Jorge, for for you, the testing of this, uh, like provisioning the network with the contracts, like we will have to not only deploy the deposit contract, but also the mock GNO. Uh, should this be baked into the playbox, or how how are you doing it now? We can we can do it on the on the Genesis, right? So so it is uh, pretty simple, and it's the way that postal contracts uh, were deployed for Shiado, for example. You just give me the the bytecode for the constructor, so what you would put in the transaction data for the deploying transaction, uh, and we can put that in the Genesis. So we have support for for that in in our Genesis file, and um, and it will be like uh, deployed on Genesis. I think that's the simplest way, so that we don't need to to actually go through the deployment after the testnet is live. But we can do it that way also if you prefer. No, I think that's putting on the Genesis sounds easier. So in in Genesis, you can put bytecode, also storage. Or uh, what like what, what capabilities do you have now? Uh, I don't remember. I'm not sure about storage. I think I think we have support for storage. Definitely, we have support for bytecode, as in the the deployed bytecode. We have support for the constructor, as, as in the bytecode you run, and and then the, the return result is what you leave as a code for the for the account uh, value. But I'm not sure about storage. I'll need to check the code base, or maybe some of the guys here, Lucas or maybe Marek knows, but don't remember exactly right now. So to generate the CL Genesis, you are using the same tool as always. Yes, yes, yes. Because it, it would be cool if we can, even in Genesis, have some validators already with uh, like the zero, zero x one credentials. OK, so so we, we're not like uh, very proficient with the CL tooling. We just yeah, I can, know I can look enough. into it. OK, OK. And I, I, think, yeah. I think that one was done by Proto. So maybe I can ping him to add it. Yeah. Oh, we good. Yeah, I think we're using that one. Because then, then the test will be kind of automatic. So the, the other point, so to like the minimum thing to trigger withdrawals is we will need some validators to have the zero x one. So if we can have it that in the genesis, then we don't have to. Well, we should submit messages, but some of them will be triggered automatically. Um, then okay. we need to deploy the deposit contract, also the RC twenty contract, and give some tokens to the deposit contract. So th this is why I was bringing up uh, the storage part. Like, what, what would be the, the simplest way to assign tokens to the deposit contract? OK, so if we are uh, feeling hacky, like what I did for the merge was that I just basically created a branch and hard-coded like part of the code base, just uh, hard-coded the storage slot and modified it. In the in the process processing, like before, try like after processing Genesis, I was changing the the source slot. So that that's that's a hacky way to go around it. But I think we we should have a support for storage. I will check it down on the you know. Well, we can also have a so we we can have an RC twenty that assigns tokens to an address and be that part of the constructor bytecode. 
Uh, yes, uh, that's that's something also. So what happens if you, so because you can assign code, um, like whatever you want on, 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 the, on the Genesis, you could have the private key for an account that has a contract. So say if, if I had the private key for the deposit contract and then I send a transaction, what happens? No, I have no idea. <laughs> so, so that those are edge cases that I, I presume nobody has tested because I, I presume there is no network that has that has done that. Yeah. yeah, so we have support for storage. So it should be uh fairly simple to to add balance to this to to some erc20 like can can you compute this, the storage slots given given the variable ordering of the contract i'm not sure but let me let me just uh before Rukesh, uh, uh let me just find out that the way that i think postal for example does something similar uh, in, in that it needs to initialize storage for some contracts and what it does is that well postal does it with a special initialized contract that in the constructor this contract uh calls a uh, few means method for example in another contract and, and that's the way you initialize it uh so for example what you could do is the the constructor for your esc20 could uh have a few parameters of the addresses that you would like to find and we can just add those parameters to, to, to the to the constructor bytecode uh, in the Genesis file, uh, and that would be it, right? So that would be for for initialization. No need to start to be computing storage slots on it. Exactly. Yeah, it's easier to just make it make it in code to solve the yeah. initialization. Yeah. And one last point, I guess. For this, we would be seeing Ihor and Adam, like we can see from the audit, but there was a branch from uh, the the old XI team that they they did an attempt at building withdrawals for the network. Um, like we are using a different design, but some capability that they had is that they could pause withdrawals. So the the admin, the postal admin, had the capability to pause withdrawals. Um, I think that's. I think that sucks, um, but I'm just bringing it up in case anyone has any comment. If some like say security capability like that would be appropriate or not. Like my opinion is, um, withdrawals should always work. Um, and hopefully, whenever we figure out the GNO situation in in Gnosis, such that not even the insolvency case is possible, and then anyone that stakes in in Gnosis has the guarantee that it can exit. So yeah, I think being able to post withdrawal sounds really bad. But I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah, I don't think we should implement a function to stop withdrawals. <laughs> oh, and I, I think I brought this up already, but just, just to make sure that relevant people is aware, with the withdrawals would look like xdai um, native to rc20 transactions where they just don't exist on on the explorer there will be no trace there will be no logs so i think it's it's important for 
um, the explorers, at least, or the, the ones that we are working with, if they can add some visualization of withdrawals such that users have a way to, to check that the withdrawal has happened. Otherwise, it would be um, awkward. Uh, Lukash? If, if this is needed, this can get generate receipts, right? It's not like we cannot generate receipts for that. It was, we didn't for now, but we can. Uh, you mean adding the receipt of the season transaction to the block itself? Yeah, but I don't like it, right? No. No, I think it's much like it's not that hard. Like the, the information is already on the block. Mm -hmm. Just that the explorer has to read that information and display it in a way. Um, I, in, in my opinion, the way it would make more sense is uh, the explorers. When you go to an account, it has different tabs for the types of transactions. Say, a regular transaction, RC twenty, um, NFT, or um, or internal transaction. They they can they can just add a new tab called withdrawals and just index whatever comes in the blocks. And if the receiving is that address, just show it there. And that should be sufficient. Yeah, I would think that they would actually display withdrawals for mainnet. So we can probably piggyback on. I would be surprised if they were not displayed. Yeah. So if, if, if it's implemented for mainnet, then we don't need to do anything. Uh, the, the only caveat for us is in the insolvency case, the withdrawal will appear, but it will not be. Uh, it will not have been actually executed. But if that if that edge case happens, um, the explorer could check the contract state and actually make sure that the con that that specific withdrawal has been execu executed or not. I think it would have to check right on every case the state uh, of this contract after the block. Uh, and remind me what happens if um, there is a failure in the withdrawal contract do do we actually accept such blocks if there is any failure i don't remember the spec if the transaction reverses the block is invalid so all valid blocks like in in all valid blocks all withdrawals should should be executed fine well let, let's define executed so um, when the system transaction calls the contract, the transaction will, will not revert. But if the actual delegate call to the token contract fails, then the withdrawal will be added as pending failed in the contract state to be executed later. So, right. Yeah, Lukash? If we are talking block explorers, my question mark, should those withdrawals be visible in traces in any way? I don't know, what do you think? Mixed feelings. Should I would just keep it simple, like, I mean, mm -hmm. So you, you mean to debug in case there is some issue? Um, either that or like they could uh, read these values from traces, right? That those were actually added or something. But I don't know. Just, just a question. Should it be visible right outside or, or not in any way? Yeah, be told, I, I would why. like feedback from block explorers and users, right? What do they want instead of me deciding here? I would say keep it simple. And with the information from the blogs, it's, it's sufficient in almost every case. I think if there are no more comments, I think we can call it. Yeah, I didn't want to ask because until now, every time I did, there were. 
Now it's good. But Let's yeah, just keep, keep asking until no one says anything. <laughs> so does anyone have further questions or comments? But I guess not. So let's end here. All right. Thank well, you. thanks everyone for joining and see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, -bye. 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 Bye, -bye.